Rebecca tells me to get uh, record permission from the meeting house, so maybe you need to start the recording. Uh, yep, recording is started. Okay, good. I will be your timekeeper this morning, five, five minutes, and uh, I have li little, little cards. I hope the okay, that doesn't work. So I'll just, <laughs> I probably I'll just do it in the chat or I'll just start ping you, uh, you know, once you get towards four minutes that you have one minute left, which means, you know, try to find a nice, uh, a nice ending. So it's important you manage your entire time budget of 10 minutes. So it's up to you to make sure that you have really leave five minutes to get uh, enough to get questions that are answered. Let's go. Any further question? Uh, anytime you can use the, the chat for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, but our question is, since uh, how do we control the presentation? Yes. It's our first time doing this. So how do okay. we like, so I'm, like I, Yeah, I'm sharing my screen at the moment. I'm stopping to share now. And now one of you could say share and then pick the window you want to share. So the teams who are actually sharing their screen and then you control the presentation, the pace, um, and so on. Any other question? Thank you, Veronica, for the tutorial. Let's go. So we're starting with Samsung. Samsung IoT. Share your screen, unmute your microphone. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Pretty good. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. so I am going to share our presentation and then can you give me a second. I'm not on the clock right now, right? No, no. Hi, everybody. <laughs> can everyone hear me all right? We can hear, we can hear you, right? Yeah. You. All right. A moment. Okay. I said go. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so our team is the Samsung IoT team, which means that we will focus on solving the plastic issue using IoT, uh, specifically in the context of Samsung's home appliances. For this presentation, we'll, we're, we're gonna take you through the first half of our semester and uh, the discoveries that we made during our research and then the solutions that we came up with and we'll wrap up with a recommendation. One very important thing to keep in mind here is one big discovery that we made is that you cannot divorce the idea of uh, innovation and recycling from contamination. And that has been the focus uh, largely of our presentation. In our first class, we realized that there's many ways to reduce the consumer's plastic waste. Um, our main ideas were in the field of microplastics, smart buildings, the optimization and the production, and in the sector of healthcare. Those ways to reduce plastic can be divided into two ways um, of approach, which is customer-faced or company-faced. And we were talking to some experts, did interviews and market research, and got to the result that we can find better and more effective approaches um, when we go with the company based way. So our main ideas were um, the microplastics. We just had to filter microplastics and inform the consumer how much they filter, how much they save the environment by doing so. But we got to the issues that we don't really know how much we filter and um, how far filters are developed, how much they can actually do. Um, so our second approach was reducing the contamination um, of plastic, which means that plastics are not recycled well or not um, 
or mixed so they can't be recycled anymore. Um, the issue here is that many customers don't know how to recycle and um, the uh, main source of contamination. Um, our third approach was to detect products that can be recycled by RFID tags or airport tags. We decided that the solution with the highest impact is um, the reducing the contamination by sourcing containers, educating the people and branding um, the technologies like the Holy Grail Sensing Project by P&G. Um, and also another approach where our, was um, to find optical sensor ways. Great. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good, so uh, what we actually wanted to do to, to find kind of the truth or uh, the problem behind everything was uh, to actually interview people. And um, we put a lot of time and effort into interviewing uh, from a wide, wide variety of different countries and also saw some uh, really uh, interesting uh, trends inside of different ge geographical uh, like locations. Um, the, the main takeaways from here are that recycling, the reason for not recycling is often that it's inconvenient, it's too hard, there are not the uh, required uh, infrastructure, and so on. Um, we saw that there's a, a difference between the US and European countries, for example, which means that if, uh, for example, Samsung wants to target the US market first, there might be a greater uh, opportunity to make an impact here. And uh, this was the first part of interviewing, and then the second part of interviewing was to actually propose different solutions to them, which may, we made as a follow-up survey, and that was uh, something that we will return to in Ayusha's part in the recommendation. Um, so, what does this mean? Uh, we created personas from all the all the like nearly hundred interviews that we made, and three um, like really strong personas came up. So we have Julia, which is kind of the uh, most recycling uh, forward person, and that is something that comes often from uh, the family and learned things. Then the uh, orange one is uh, something who has been kind of forced by his social circle to recycle. And the last one is the one that doesn't really care about recycling because it's too hard or some other excuse. The interesting thing was that we tried to always uh, put the red personas to the orange personas and then to the green ones, but how they rate themselves in terms of how good they are in recycling, there is kind of a, this kind of Dunning-Kruger effect in the orange persona, which they think that they are actually better than the green personas, even if they are worse objectively. Thanks, Henry. Uh, guys, Sorry, it looks like we're out of time and I would want to leave uh, space for questions. So these, this was our process of narrowing down our solutions and I think we're going to skip the slide. Very, very briefly touch on each solution. And then, okay, yeah, I and think then the, that this was, this was your five minutes. You have yeah. 10 minutes, you know, so. so. Go ahead, go uh, show us your solutions mm -hmm. and we'll have a bit of time for feedback. Okay, James? Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, so our first solution after narrowing down our market data and findings was a scanner attachment. So just quickly, um, it can detect whether an object is recyclable or not. The technology exists and it can be an improvement to other home appliances such as like a fridge or it can just be attached to the wall. And all of these scanners throughout the building will be connected and will collect and aggregate data for a database. And finally, we wanted the benefit of educating consumers. An idea for the scanner is to display plastic data um, towards consumers, such as 10 kilograms of plastic recycled this month. Okay, solution two. So the solu second solution, uh, this one's a little out there. Uh, it's crypto trash. Basically, uh, we, with this solution, we drop any 
uh, any attempt at educating the consumer and focus on the trash collection portion, where we basically say that the people collecting your trash uh, will not recycle the the material, the recycled materials from households that historically have been bad. They're incentivized to only recycle uh, the recycled materials from houses that actually uh, have low contamination rates. And uh, this targets the problem much more directly, albeit um, in an unconventional way. And then the last solution was basically a smart trash can with a data analytics app. Uh, And the point of this solution was to both have education, but also address the contamination. So essentially what the smart trash can will do is that it organizes based on material. Uh, But while it's doing this, it also automatically uploads data to the cloud, which will help us provide insights to consumers about better ways to recycle, better materials to use, and different ways to change their habits in order to have a much greener world. Uh, And what the way that we're going to be doing this with addition to these incentives with these with this data is provide incentives, such as like if a consumer recycles X amount of plastic, then we can uh, give them like a free reusable water bottle or a free reusable bag. So that they're just in the cycle of, uh, you know, keep recycling and keep moving forward. But the most important part uh, of this is going to be the data analytics app, because this data can be both used for the consumer, uh, but also for the next step, which brings us to our recommendation. You got 15 seconds. (laughs) Cool. Uh, so with the few reasons that we basically recommend the smart trash and data analytics app is because a there's a customer interest and market need b there's a strategic revenue and partnerships that can be made and finally uh, all our research and interview has shown us that this is the best product great all right guys good job we're not gonna upload because uh, Apple's never getting great uh, with micro but at least shaking our hands good job guys um, we have still about one minute uh, a bit more for question and, and remarks uh, anyone wants to start either the outsiders or um, the, the team that has to, to ask questions so that's time for one question we can also follow up afterwards if you type it absolutely so guys just uh, freely unmute and ask a question straightforward if you'd like hey guys can you hear me this is yes go, go ahead this, this is Joe Hunter at method um, I thank you for uh, for that. I know I've, I uh, I'm just jumping in here in the mid- midterm um, in Kai's place, but I was c- curious about this idea of you know this you're trying to get after this what we call wishful recycling, where you throw everything in the bin, hope it goes through, but it actually causes contamination, um, and that kind of layers through all three options. And I'm just kind of curious about how much how you kind of think about as you go forward. Um, you know, identifying materials versus colors and how you might look at that from mun- municipality to municipality where, you know, they do have varying acceptability of certain types of materials. And then beyond that, even certain types of colors, um, which is like hyper local for a specific area. So uh, we are leaving the actual identification part intentionally open. And uh, we're doing that because uh, for two reasons. One, uh, we are leaving the option open for uh, for existing companies who can identify certain plastic types, uh, which uh, Matthew has let us know is like he can he can actually connect us with, and we might be able to actually get a product out in in that context where our scanners in each of our solutions actually identify the type of plastic. We want to leave that option open. That's one reason for for leaving everything vague in that sense. The second is we want to have. Uh, options like reading barcodes and whatnot specialized to different municipalities, like you were saying. Uh, I think that problem is something that's more specific that needs to be addressed as we move forward throughout the semester. And right now, uh, uh, we want to narrow down our larger high level uh, direction before we uh, get into how exactly we will be identifying plastic once we decide that this is what we want to focus on. Great, thank you uh, to also the guys that are uh, sending comments on the chat. Uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, maybe let's take time for one or two additional questions, even though we're running out of time. Uh, is there any question from either an outsider or um, another team? I have, uh, I have one. Hi, Ellen here. Yes. So there is already some commercialized solution in what we call like a smart uh, trash solution. 
Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I was wondering, have you looked at additional technology differentiation that could make your solution stronger? Yeah, so, oh, you, you want, can go ahead for yeah. this. Yeah, I can take this one. So, we actually looked at the group in Poland that's uh, working with these smart trash cans. And the reason what we want to do is with our smart trash can, not only do we want to provide, like, a way for consumers to, uh, you know, have a better way of recycling, but the most important part of our like our interface is going to be the fact that we're providing this data analytics. Um, and this is going to be really important because with this data analytics, not only do we have a further insight into what consumers are like basically consuming, but we also have a better insight onto what waste management companies want. Uh, and this is really important because, for example, say we're working with uh, a local uh, waste distributor that picks up all these different wastes. They have certain things that they're looking for. Uh, which they can only get through our data. So this data is going to be really, really important, which differentiates us from all these other groups of people, because a lot of these other groups and all these other products are simply looking towards, you know, uh, only having the smart trash can, whereas we're trying to have the smart trash can plus the data analytics. So what do you understand a little bit, right? If you look at the US, there's approximately... And we've lost you, Elaine. I guess we can't hear you. I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, sorry, Ellen, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, you're very far from the mic. Okay, let me try. I have a small voice, so I apologize. <laughs> if you look at what's really fascinating right now, right? And based on the market research, what I've done is the way we recycle plastic, when you actually go to the actual plastic recycling, only like a very small percentage got efficiently recycled. And that's because there's so many types of plastic, bioplastic, we don't really have an established efficient way to do it. So is your vision to data analytics trying to make this process easier to try to educate consumers about where it goes where, to try to help waste management more efficiently sort this plastic? Yeah, that's exactly uh, one of the ideas that we had. So we were actually talking to Matthew just last week about this. Uh, but essentially, with the data that we have from these waste management companies, we can better help consumers to start using better plastic. So this is part of the education part of the app, where we can provide consumers like be like, hey, don't use these types of plastic, use this type of plastic. And the way that we get them to do that is through incentives and education. So not only do they feel like they're helping the world, but they also get something for doing that. Uh, that's really interesting, yeah, because most of the solutions I've seen are really more at the sorting mechanism, right? At the smart trash level only. So you're providing an additional level there. Yeah. One other, one other angle to the data analytics is uh, one huge consideration that we had for every single one of our solutions was that it has to affect the bottom line positively. And if you have information on everything that's coming out of a household, you effectively also have information on everything that's going in. And that, that level of data and that level of knowledge for Samsung is enough if, if, built, if done at scale to make Samsung a, a market leader in, in the consumer uh, product use uh, data market. And that's, that's also another huge consideration. Great guys, I think we're uh, really out of time. Please feel free to put any question you have on the chat. And also I think uh, Samsung team is interested to uh, get in touch with Ellen because she may be able to provide more uh, inputs. Uh, also, uh, Rhea, I know you're here and you're gonna have a bit more time with your team afterwards to maybe uh, discuss about those. those uh, a uh, huge round of virtual applause for uh, Samsung IoT. Great job, guys. And let's move to Forisia. Uh, Forisia, if you could uh, show your screen and your slides. Uh, and again, you'll have uh, five minutes to pitch and then two minutes. Uh, uh, Samsung IoT, Samsung Robotics, and Method Whole Foods. Be very uh, yeah. be also asking. So, oh, this is. Yes. Um, Hello. Let me try to share screen somewhere. 
Yes. Mm. Not yet, right? Or let me let me try. Well, we see your camera. Oh, just a second. I just did. Yes. Oh, did you get it? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Okay, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. So when you, okay, I'll, I'll start. When you think of um, the ultimate uh, green car, what do you think of? Maybe a hybrid, maybe a fully electric car, like a Tesla. Well, add on to that vision a plastic free interior of a car. So that's our um, ultimate goal. We are working with Grecia, a, um, a car parts uh, manufacturer, to optimize their um, natural fiber, um, natural fiber composite plastic material for car part interiors. So currently, um, it's a composite of 50% flax, 50% polypropylene, and our goal is to. Um, optimize the supply chain and the materials used. Um, so we are um, replacing flax with henequen and um, henequen sourced um, locally closer to the manufacturer uh, in Mexico. And um, we're looking into replacing non-biodegradable polypropylene with a biodegradable that is integers. Yeah. Or yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask: Are you guys? Can you guys hear as well? Yeah, I think we heard you better than than Rosita, but it's it's fine. Okay. Yeah, is that I also heard some background noise. I don't know what was happening, but um, okay. Let's continue. So um, this is a map we wanted to to show because um, these are just some of the stakeholders that we've had more of um of a contact. We are a different team because uh, this was a group that worked, you know, uh, last year. So uh, it wasn't something about interviewing so many people for us. For us, it was actually, you know, getting stakeholders to, to get on board and, uh, you know, get supply chain. And so this is, for, for us, this is wonderful because um, currently to make a car part like the ones that Farisha is doing, some of the parts are coming from uh, Japan, others are coming from Belgium, some are assembled in Germany, then they're flown to the United States or Mexico. So it's all over the place, right? So um, basically this map is a map of Mexico and you can see that in the Southern side, we'll have some people in the North who are already working with farmers. So they will be our uh, natural material providers. We also have some um, people working at map producers and plastic suppliers. Um, very near to the Farisha plant. So even though we hadn't had the same success with all of the stakeholders, we've definitely been doing some great work, um, you know, bringing a more local supply chain to, uh, to you know, a, a supply chain that was normally global and had a lot of transportation around the world, right? And one of the biggest successes that we've actually had, we, we've actually been able to, you know, have a client. We actually have prices for you know, Henneken sourcing and things like that. So like in terms of like a tangible like development, like we, we actually have like prices by tonnage, for example. Um, so, you know, we were able to, success to successfully, you know, uh, talk to a bunch of farmers and like we were able to negotiate a really good price. And, um, you know, we left that to uh, Ricardo and Oscar to, you know, negotiate good old fashioned. Um, and I think that like, one thing that we want to improve on, we want to move for, further on is like the social impact of it. So essentially what we're trying to do is like, uh, one thing we realized is that um, the technology that farmers use isn't necessarily efficient. And that also drives prices up just because of how like the technology is based. So one thing we want to do is we want to work with universities uh, nearby and create certain programs to allow students there to kind of improve that, um, kind of technology. So um, yeah, we're just definitely looking into that social aspect of it as well. So. Sorry. Um, hello. So we're looking into replacing um, the 
the half polypropylene in the composite. Um, and this is an extension of what we were doing last year, what the past producer team was doing. Um, they left us with a lot of great work relating to replacing the natural fiber of um, the composite. And I would like to extend that to um, looking into a resin that is um, biodegradable so that our car part is um, fully compostable at the end at the with our final product. And um, we, yeah. That's your five minute half time. Really? Oh my God. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna rush then. Okay. Um, well, we did it, we did some microscopic analysis. We can see like the two tests that we have the fat that is 50 times, also the Henneken fiber 50 times. The topology of the fibers are almost the same. The main, the big difference is that the Henneken fibers obviously are much bigger, and this can be a good part for the mechanical properties because as it is bigger. It's more thick, and the seed is thick, it can have better pencil stress. Also, well, we did uh, some tests. Uh, you can see, the, there is the machine that we did the pencil strain test to the Henneken mat. Also, the microscope, the picture that you see in the slide before, it was for the surface topology characterization. Also, in the next two weeks, we are going to do a pencil strain test to the Henneken and Fax fibers not just to the Henneken fiber that we did. Also, we are going to, uh, we are going to do an example for a sample for uh, the fact final product to compare the mechanical properties from the actual product that they have in Fabricia and to compare it with the new one that we are going to have from the prototype that we are going to make the manufacturers in Mexico to make a sample for making these tests. Well, also we have like two videos and that show like the tensile stand that we are doing in the laboratory and how is this material the Henneken fiber produce. Okay, now I'm gonna speak a little bit about the goals for Roblox and a little bit of the timeline. Very basically what we're trying to do this two weeks is that our biggest roadblock is that we're having some trouble contacting Mexican mat suppliers because even though we already have the context, they've never worked with Henneken before. So they are a bit, um, I guess um, they are being cautious about it, but um, this is what's gonna happen in the next two weeks. We're also researching some other PLA or PP suppliers to see if we can actually source it from Mexico instead of Japan. Then um, the biggest, uh, thing in the timeline is we are planning on the first week of April actually going to Mexico trip and our biggest goal is to actually make our first prototype car part and bring it to Berkeley and to make it a 50% uh, Henneken and 50% plastic. So that's the biggest goal. Uh, even an extra goal would be to maybe have it instead of just a PP, maybe it could be recycled PP or it could even be PLA, PBS. Recycle PP is difficult as you're gonna see in the next slide, but, uh, and after coming from the trip, we're gonna do more tests, actually see how it compares and to see if it's, you know, feasible in the end and if it's a good product or if we need to do more iterations. All right, um, I'm gonna wrap, oh wait. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so in terms of the roadblocks, I think the main issue for us is just trying to, um, contact mat producers that haven't necessarily worked with Henneken. So we're just uh, having a working list on, in terms of that. And in terms of like the plastic and plastics and things like that, uh, Ricardo has definitely mentioned that we're gonna be researching uh, side options in terms of like recycling uh, issues. And in terms of response times, I think that uh, there's definitely some kind of, uh, communication issues. So definitely actually going to Mexico and, um, you know, talking to, to them face to face would definitely get the ball rolling a little faster. And uh, uh, in terms of standardized testing, we just need to, uh, you know, have some kind of standard way of measuring the actual properties so that we can, you know, have a good uh, baseline comparison. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yes, our goal is to have a better ecological product, that it will have a good social impact and that it would be economically feasible so that it would be groundbreaking for Farisha and for the car industry. Thank you.
Good job, guys. Again, uh, virtual applause. Uh, thank you so much. So we still have one minute left for uh, questions or comments. Um, again, any constructive uh, feedback from uh, outsiders first, and then and then students. Hey there, this is Joe again from Method. Hey, Joe. Um, this is this is great. I was in the the program last uh, last time around, and so this is a cool extension of the work that was done in the first uh, the first program. And one of the questions, and you you started to allude to it, but be curious to see you know as you guys get in more depth about like not only for Hennepin, the seasonality of what that looks like, um, you know, from season to season throughout the year. And if there's any risk there from a supply chain standpoint, even though it's closer. And then also just understanding further performance tests beyond just like a virgin component where you would be looking at, you know, actually simulating interiors of cars that they may be in there for 15 plus years. So I think you're, you started to allude to that, but um, it would be interesting to see kind of the extension of that as you get further into the details. Well, definitely, that's definitely something. Um, and um, even though we're still not there yet, we don't have, you know, the part, it's definitely going to be a big factor, you know. It, definitely materials change after time. And um, and uh, we're, we're definitely going to be into that and hopefully also try different plastics and see if that even, you know, changes some of the end product for for us so it's definitely going to be a a thing to to know yes thank you mm -hmm. there's an interesting question uh, in the chat um i wanted to ask how big the car interior market is as it relates to the henneken project and i and i building on that the question is really out of uh, you know what what a bit what what business can can your team help Foresia to grow here? Because after all, this is an entrepreneurial class. So um, please, if you to spend also some time on on these, uh, you know, commercial and business questions. Um, uh, I think that this one can help a lot because many of the automotive industry that supply to United States are in Mexico. So making this industry, it helps the people that has like their business. For example, the Henneken before was a big produce in Mexico, but it was like discontinued. But now with this kind of products, with this kind of material, we can like reactivate the economy of those parts. So it will help also to create some companies because already they almost use the fires for the Henneken just for tourist purposes, for example, um, the last semester, I think that the team that went to Mexico in the Hacienda, it was a hotel that they almost just showed the, the, the process of the Henneken, but it was just for tourism processes, but not with, with this, we are going to do not just to, for tourist purposes, but also for industrial, industrial materials. And that's like a really good thing for the business in the area. Yes, definitely. Just to give you an estimate, they were talking about 10 tons per year for um, a specific um, car company that they worked last year, but that is just one. And Mexico has definitely um, other car companies that could be interested, Mazda, and well, I guess so many that also have their plants over there and it could really scale up a lot. We have one last question uh, from maybe outsiders. <clears throat> Hi, Hugo speaking from Foresia. Not a question, but uh, <clears throat> just a, a detail for the team. So voluntarily, we as a student to not uh, be involved in uh, pricing negotiation or so we just uh, orientate them on the tonnage that we would need per year. But uh, for our policies, we cannot, uh, yeah, we cannot uh, go in the detail of the commercial. So we uh, for sure will back them up and we'll have a purchasing guy going with them once uh, the deal will have to be done. But uh, yeah, they could not uh, anyway uh, feedback or write that after that for, uh, for this project. Okay. So the key, the key struggle that they will have to face is the, with this virus and so uh, to, to uh, come to an end uh, with uh, this meeting. But the main push uh, this project but the main push right now is to as they say 
get the guys convinced to make trials and uh, <clears throat> get convinced to put in their machine these new fibers. So they have some uh, negotiation skill to develop to do that. And, uh, and this, uh, this will, uh, will uh, pave the way to the rest of the, of the topics. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Again, uh, feel free to make any question or comments on the chat. Uh, and I think, you know, this topic of relocalization is definitely getting uh, hotter with what's happening with the coronavirus. So I think it's definitely a, a project in the, in the face of time. Uh, let's have Danon now uh, ready. So Danon, if you could share your screen um, and uh, if we can have you on stage, if I could say. Awesome. Thank you. Just doing a mic check. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Check. Perfect. Check. Yeah. Uh, really this good. will be the most it w we saw so so much high technology. This will be a very approachable and <laughs> <laughs> easy to understand project. I think compared to this beautiful technology that we saw. Sounds good. Previous. Um, Perry, are you in the call? Perry, can we? Can you hear? Yeah. Perry? Yeah. Okay, I do, do you hear me too? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone always can see. Mm -hmm. Quick minute. One of you share the share the slides. Yeah, uh, Arjun's handling that. I think he's figuring it right now. You'll see. Yes. yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's go, guys. Let's go, Danon. Okay. Um, I'll start. Yeah. In three, two, one, go. Danon. The, food cons the global food consumer goods product company is seeking for future in, in its product packaging. And today, five hours, moving on to the next slide, the five hours coming from an intersection of different majors um, coming from a STEM background, business background, have, have, have chosen to take up this challenge and bring change, uh, bring needed change to the company for, for its future needs. Moving on to the agenda slide, uh, this is just to give you a snapshot of how our presentation is going to be. First, we're going to walk you through the problem and the challenges, and then we're going to walk you through what we have done so far and the form solutions that we have formulated. Finally, the recommendation that we're giving to the client, and based on recommendation, what are our next steps moving forward. So moving on to the next slide, uh, this is a challenge. So Walwick is a, a certain mineral product under the known, and they want us to be focusing on that product and in regards to that product, there's three things that they want us to address. First is how do we improve the customer experience and interaction with the product? Second is how do we make the bottle design more sustainable? And this could come in regards of trying to reduce, uh, move, the, uh, move the product away from plastic and trying to make it more recyclable or even making, more, making it more compostable in the future. And finally, um, just like every other business, it's very important for us to also focus on increasing its profit margin. And in regards to do that, how do we increase the revenue, the number of units being sold? How do we reach out to more uh, target consumers and how we can decrease the cost of production? So now I'd like to pass over the baton to Perry to speak about the groundwork that we've done so far. Uh, we had 37 interviews with people from five different countries, uh, mostly focused on Europe and also capturing US. Um, can we change the slide? And these were our findings. So we had three personas. The first one being focused on affordability. Um, the second one uh, puts taste first. And the last persona is an example of the leader of a household. Um, and from these interviews, we had some customer pain points. These pain points are mostly, mostly focused on design. For example, the bottle being bulky and not being in, not the most convenient to carry or store, uh, in addition to poor water from. Uh, and lastly, uh, people prefer a product that they can carry around with and drink from. Uh, however, the current design is not suitable for this. And from these interviews, we had some um, conclusions. Um, 
the first being that people like to be able to personalize their water and we should improve the design should be improved to be able to carry is to be able to carry easier and um, also uh, store easier um, and lastly households have a higher demand for these for this bottle format so they should be the initial target now i'll be able, i'll be passing it over to Ksenia to talk about the solutions Thank you, Carrie. So we really, when we were developing our solutions, we tried to look at all the main pain points of a big bottle in a household, primarily the people who are buying it of families and uh, in, have trouble like storing it or figuring out how to uh, have enough space for all the flavors and carbonated water that they have in the fridge. So with that consideration, we decided to create a device for home kitchen that would help store the Volvic bottle inside and create personalized flavors. It also makes the pouring easy and fast so it can be easily connected with a tumbler. So it's a countertop dispenser with a touch screens which uh, lets adjust the flavor and carbonation level of the drink. Uh, the feedback from the customers were mainly positive. Uh, however, for the customer, for our client, we realized that it may be a little bit too far of a solution uh, because it potentially is moving to different category. So our next solution was water in a box. Uh, with that, we are changing the bottle design to make it more easy to store, to make it stackable, to save space, and um, also reduce packaging after the use. So the, this, uh, this box is easily collapsible after use, and you can also reuse the spout um, for the next bottle. Uh, so with that, it had a great, mainly great uh, feedback from the customers, and I think uh, the client also mentioned that it's something uh, that can be do doable. And I would like to pass it to Arjun to talk about our next solution. Thank you. So we are investigating a third I'm possible solution. Um, so this is called the Volvic Bottle Redesign. So we realized that some users uh, have trouble like lifting and pouring the bottle. So we could come up with a better design to reposition the bottle cap from top to bottom to make it easier for all people to use and add a sturdier grip to make carrying easier. Um, and we realized that people want bottles that take up less space in household areas, uh, more kid friendly and are more sustainable. So we'll continue to push the Volvic brand and the known brand by emphasizing 100% recycled PET packaging. So generally customers were very happy with this uh, type of idea um, and it tackles a lot of their pain points and maintains the sustainability record that the known holds. Our fourth and final possible solution is an app plus tracker. So we actually created a small prototype here that you can see um, and this shows you how the app would pair with your current bottle and it will track your consumption. So it reminds you w exactly when you should purchase a new bottle. And then if you want to, uh, and then when you have that smart delivery system, as you can see, it tracks the bottle from its original source right to your doorstep. Um, because people uh, have argued that it's harder to carry big bottles if you're buying it from a market or a store. And um, the client as well would like to you know, improve the logistics. So this is one possible solution. Um, in terms of customer feedback, um, people are very interested in this app design um, and it uh, solves a lot of the convenience issues. Um, and we're, we're looking to see how maybe we can push this forward. Um, so with that, I'll pass the baton back to Gotham. And uh, after running through all our solutions with customers and running it through the pain points and sustainability, sustainability aspects, uh, we created a structure on how we should evaluate uh, all these four products. And we figured out that water in box got the highest cost on all three rubrics. And uh, we also realized that it best optimizes all pain points, all target consumer markets out there as well. And it's, uh, it's, it's definitely very feasible in role uh, implementing by the company as, uh, as there's less technology involved. So we're going, we are, we are recommending the known to, to implement the water in box solution. Um, in regards to the next steps, um, 
uh, we we believe we uh, that there are a lot of things that we have to do moving forward. We we are planning to do a find a business model around this, try to figure out the cost. Trying to we we realize that since the known is a global brand, it requires us to market the product differently across different regions because the needs of consumers differ. And uh, we also are thinking how we can push our innovative designs forward, targeting different niches and different uh, target consumers uh, across the across the world. But uh, as as we said, this is a group of really passionate individuals who are who are seeking to to change change the way product packaging works uh, in uh, in the world. So we are all really excited for the challenge, and uh, we're looking forward to giving you all the best in the next five weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Great guys, fantastic. Uh, would I maybe ask one of you to show the bottle so that everyone can figure out how big it is? I guess, Senia, you maybe have one of those handy. That's the bottle. Thank you. Yes, if anyone can see it. So it's an eight liter bottle, so pretty, pretty big, so that everyone can figure out how yeah. big uh, the challenge is, how, actually. <laughs> and how strong it is. Thank you so much, guys. Any any questions from the outsiders or from other students? Um, I know some of the outsiders have a deep uh, retail expertise. Hala, it's Ellen here again. Can you hear Ellen. me? Speak yeah, so I, uh, I work with quite a few bioplastic companies, and that's very interesting because it seems that making a Coca-Cola tried a few years ago to, to, to launch uh, to, to launch like a, a bioplastic solution for bottle. And from a commercialization standpoint, right, requirement to what corporations need to do in terms of being able to uh, guarantee the material in terms of temperature, in terms of stability, there's a lot of challenges from a technology standpoint. So I was wondering if um, the solution that is, or the, 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 the discussion around it, uh, have you been looking at all these metrics that corporations typically add for commercialization? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question once again? Have you, they, they did like, in terms of bottle, if you look mm -hmm. historically, a lot of companies have tried to create a scalable uh, solution uh, for plastic, for, for a specific bottle. And like, I know a lot of bioplastic companies I uh, were not able to find a viable commercialized solution, something that could be scaled because of some of the requirements intrinsic to uh, a plastic bottle. I know companies such as Coca-Cola or others. So I was wondering what type of, um, did you use some of those commercial metrics, some of those commercial, commercial requirements in some of the studies that you made? I think this is a great question. We actually work with the head of research and development for plastics. So uh, the what clients wanted us to focus on was mainly the design of the bottle itself, but not necessarily the uh, components of uh, the, the plastic. But it's a great question, and I think we can follow up with the client uh, about it. But to, we did not do... A, necessarily like the metrics uh, for, the, for the, the composition of the bottle. Thank you, thank you, that was very useful. What I can say for now, Xenia, is that the bottle that you've shown is actually 100% uh, recycled plastic. Yeah. Uh, so at least they've managed to put it at scale for this specific bottle. Uh, but not much detail that we have right now about uh, actual yeah. bottle. Yes, uh, according to uh, our client, it's, it is recycled recyclable and it is made from re a recycled material. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Great, uh, I think we have a question. Uh, can you just explain a bit more the solution number four? I feel there's frustration from someone here. Yeah, sure. Um, so solution four is um, an app plus tracker. So the app is something that you would download um, from an app store and this app will pair with your bottle. So the tracker is supposed to track um, how, like, how much you've drank, and then it'll optimize you, um, your purchasing by giving you a notification saying, hey, you know, you should probably buy a, a new Volvo bottle. And then when you are reminded that, you can go to the, you can purchase the bottle, and it'll track the source, um, track the bottle um, from the original source exactly to your doorstep. So, Which that what that means is that you get to see 
the whole like Volvic journey. So you start from France or, you know, from the spring, right? That's exactly where the bottle comes from. And then you get to track, you know, through which cities it goes through. And then finally it lets you know, hey, now it's arrived. So we're trying to fix the convenience issue for the customer because a lot of people, you know, um, I mean, I've been to Europe and, you know, you were going to markets, small store and you buy a bottle and let's say you lived one or two miles from the store. You have to carry the whole bottle and it's not easy for everyone. And I think we should, very this quick. app will include um, all sorts of people. Very, very quick follow up if I can, just, just 10 seconds. Uh, yeah. So th is this a actual physical hardware that's installed on the bottle or is this tracked? like UPS FedEx tracking type thing. Yeah, so, so the, sorry, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, in, uh, where the, ideally we'd want to try to like put it uh, maybe on the bottle cap or somewhere on the bottle. And then uh, the customers have to download an app, right? So when, uh, when that tracker like tracks consumption, you will like say like, hey, based on your drinking habits, we believe that you're going to be done with drinking in two days time. Do you want to purchase a new bottle? And the app, would then suggest to order a, a new bottle and that app would facilitate what's the new bottle and its new tracker code and things like new tracker and stuff like that. There will so, be some kind of a sensor on the bottle? Is that what you're yes. saying? I yes. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you. Business for <laughs> Samsung. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. also for, from Ria for uh, the, the great feedback on the chat as well as Justin who just uh, sent us a good reference uh, of, of kind of a benchmark uh, of her head who have made the same kind of bottle. Uh, Caleb, I know you also have maybe a feedback from your expertise from Whole Foods. Uh, do you mind sharing it uh, with the, the rest of the team, especially regarding uh, the fact that it's a regional business? Yeah, so this is Caleb. I work for Whole Foods. I'm a, a category manager for the global company. Um, I know that regional sourcing for water, it's, well, sourcing for water is very regional. Um, so we, you, know, you need to make sure that you have several sources to get the water from. Um, I'm sure the Danone team is super familiar with that. Um, but shipping for water is extremely expensive. So um, I know that other brands are pursuing boxed water concepts, but um, I definitely think that's the most um, uh, effective plan that was presented today. I think that one was um, the boxed water was, made the most sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the feedback. Uh... Okay, quick question from Justin on the chat. For the box, there must be a plastic lining. Is it easy to remove for recycle purpose? That's a good question. Any idea, Kindana? Yeah, that's a great question. That's something that we are still figuring out and, and thinking for sure. Uh, we just realized that that plastic is going to be upcycled. Uh, one way we for sure improve the current bottle is that we're going to be using the reusable spout to kind of like poke uh, the that lining and then that spout can be reused. So currently, uh, you know, this is, I'm not sure if that part is recyclable, but we want to tackle um, this problem by making the spout reusable. And in regards uh, with, the, uh, with the lining, we're still like working uh, on the on the solution for that and uh, looking more into that if uh, the client approves um, our solution. Great, thank you so much for all the help provided to the team. Uh, let's move to team Samsung Robotics. Uh, huge round of applause for Danon for this great job and we can't wait to be at the final uh, demo day to see what you come up with, especially this water in the box. Uh, thank you. Samsung Robotics, can you share your screen and get ready to start. Uh, yeah, I'll share my screen. Uh, and for, for them, it would be Samsung IoT team, Foresia and Danon team who would give feedback and questions. <clears throat> okay, so share screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
Uh, you can click on present on the top right of the screen if you want to. Top look. right. Oh, okay. I see it. All right. Okay. Can everyone see? Yes. Are we? Okay. Awesome. Yes. Cool. Then. Let's go. I will start. Yeah. Hi. So we are the Samsung Robotics um, team, and we are so excited to just really talk about how robotics has potential to help with global depossification. So Samsung tasked us with basically uh, identifying ways that robotics and techno technological innovation can contribute to global depossification. Um, yeah, and obviously you can see that this is a kind of a very vague and broad and complex question. And so it kind of really depends on what kind of opportunities of intervention that we choose, as well as the definition of robotics that we choose to explore. So the definition of robotics that we came to explore is that a robot is an autonomous um, instrument that basically can do something that humans can't, can, can't really do or can do through a series of systematic action that they can repeat. Um, yeah. And so with this presentation, we're gonna go over the background of the plastic problem, go over existing robot interaction um, pinpoints and then go into our potential solutions and pros and cons analysis and stakeholder analysis. Yeah, and so if you look at the global plastic uh, product life cycle, oil is extracted from the ground um, and about eight to ten percent of oil that is extracted from the ground goes to plastic manufacturing. Plastic is manufactured and about 380 million metric tons of plastic is um, produced annually. And then that plastic generally is ordered by some type of consumer, is packaged, is transported, and then arrives at the consumer's house for uh, use. Um, and then eventually it gets uh, sorted or it goes to landfill disposal. And about only 30% of plastic is actually sorted and dis are disposed of correctly. And then 12% is actually recycled. And so this is kind of what we define as our um, value chain and we're we also are pinpointing our opportunities intervention. So robots contribute to uh, this general life cycle in the raw material extraction process and in manufacturing, as well as packaging um, and waste sorting and disposal. And so we identified um, three main areas of opportunity to intervene with robotics in this life cycle. And for us, that looks at um, the end of life cycle in pollution um, packaging, and then um, co consumer use uh, and sorting. And so, yeah, let's go into our three solutions. Okay, so for our first solution, uh, we're revolving around the physical environment. So for that, we would basically uh, have the objective of cleaning up plastic pollution in the ocean and shoreline, as well as also uh, throughout cities and maybe um, in other areas as well. Uh, so basically for that, we would just have different types of robots uh, tailored to their environment that would go out and be able to clean up plastic. Um, so for example, like a robotic shark type that would go out into the ocean uh, and pick up plastic and then come back and recycle it. Um, or in, the, in cities, we could have robots that would uh, go out and clean up the streets and bring up all that plastic and come back and recycle that as well. Uh, and so some pros with that would be that it is a very direct method um, to deal with the plastic problem and it would also have the side effect of creating a cleaner, um, more friendly environment that maybe attracts tourism. Um, but some cons with it would just be, uh, it's, it would be hard to employ and it would have to be a massive scale. Uh, and then just the problem of variability in different physical environments. Okay. So our next solution is about education. We propose that robotic technology can be applied to teach students how to sort plastic because use of plastic and simulations have proven to be worthy components of available education sources. And in the future, we think that it can change the way students learn and ultimately create a good learning environment. And there are some pros and cons to this solution. We think that the solution will provide more accurate information and large out of students. However, we will face the challenge of not all the student dis district being able to afford this kind of technology 
and the relationship that our client will have to form with schools. I can go into this more when we have time. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so our third solution focuses more on the commercial aspect. Specifically, we want to create a fleet of robots that can help with reduce plastic usage relating to consumer purchases and more specifically in the packaging area. For example, we want to create like a drone that connects to the manufacturer, which can help with delivery and then a home robot at the home that can help to pick up those packages so that it makes the delivery secure enough that we don't need extra plastic packaging anymore. Also, the home robot can also help with source and dispose of the waste properly. We really want to recommend this solution just because we got a lot of positive feedbacks from our valuable stakeholders, as well as our researching on Samsung Innovation Center. So there are many pros that the stakeholder gave us feedbacks on. For example, from Dara O'Rook, who is a professor in Berkeley Haas Responsible Business and a specialist for Amazon, told us this solution has the potential to effectively reduce cost for, produc for production, and it, it can address the problem of plastic very effectively because packaging takes 40% of plastic usage and is basically like the main production of plastic in industry today. Also, based on our research of Samsung innovation, Samsung right now have many smart home robots such as smart refrigerator and we think this solution compares with other Samsung uh, smart home robots. Also, there are some cons about the solution, just as it's most effective in e-commerce area instead of more broad industry today. Yeah. And then let's jump to the stakeholder map. You have about three minutes left. Okay. Um, so yeah, this, this won't take too long. Uh, so this is just our stakeholder feedback. Um, so we got around 100 different interviews. Uh, the majority of which uh, we got from a student-run sustainable business consulting group, uh, but we also got a few professors and industry professionals as well mixed in there. Um, and so, yeah, you guys can kind of take a look at our data. Uh, physical environment came out as the favorite, um, but uh, we still want to recommend commercial just because I think that that brings a lot of value, both not only to um, consumers, but also to the producers, to Samsung as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's gonna conclude our presentation. So we're now gonna be open to questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Good job. Thank you for uh, making your presentation uh, phone friendly uh, in a in a vertical way. Uh, any feedbacks from outsiders before students? Anyone? Yes. So um, I, I was uh, more curious about the, the business side side of this. Uh, so so who pays for all these robots and and uh, how is the cost recovered? Um, do, do you have any insights? Any thoughts about that? Yeah. So I guess for the um, so for the commercial aspect, that would most likely be paid for. Um, so it's like a fleet of robots. So each robot has potential to be paid for either by the individual consumer as a home care robot, or it can be paid for uh, within like a e-commerce giant, uh, giant. So for example, with like Amazon or like Etsy, um, they can like have robots that are more detailed in their packaging, which saves them costs. Um, so the initial investment in the robot, the cost can be recovered in just um, less material used for packaging by a more efficient robot that can analyze sizes and service area differently and then like figure out how to use better plastic packaging as well as just um, even less <coughs> delivery time. Um, yeah, stuff like that for commercials. So commercial is, I guess, the most easily recovered um, monetarily wise. Education, um, I think the education robot would be something that maybe the federal government would have to fund or individual schools have to purchase like one robot uh, that's just education based that would just go into classrooms and um, teach and interact with children. 
And so that is, um, it's not as like market feasible. Um, and then with the physical environment, that has the potential to become kind of like a private sector solution to global humanitarian issues. So for example, there's a company that's the ocean cleanup in um, Alameda County. And uh, that company basically is one of the most invested in like sustainable startup solutions like in the world. It's heavily invested in and it's basically just a like a ship that kind of has a arm kind of thing going on and it just goes into the ocean and it just like scoops up plastic and so like that um robot or they're not really robot but i guess they're kind of half a robot but like that solution is a private sex solution and it is trying to go to market as something that people can pay for it to go clean up the ocean i see okay thank you great any other questions uh either from outsider okay Tanguy, you have something Yes, um, I don't know if uh, the feedback from your stakeholder was to focus on, on this solution, but I, I really like the, your last comment about the ocean cleanup. They also developed a, a river uh, catching device that actually uh, catches the, the, um, the debris that floats into the river before it gets into the, the ocean. Um, I want to know if, if that's an option that you're going to develop a, a little further with your client and also uh, if you are looking at, at um, we've been looking at, uh, at Google, how to bring uh, machine learning and uh, AI into how we sort the, the plastic that we collect because basically in the river, you don't only have plastic, you have debris, you have wood, you have a dead cow or whatever and that's going to cause a problem and it's already quite low value. But if you bring um, the, your uh, robotics and, uh, and smart uh, visual visualization to, to how you sort what you catch, it might actually help sorting it and get extract better value with lower contamination. So uh, that's my question, if, if that's interesting uh, for your client and it's, it's something that you're going to pursue in the next part of your semester. Yeah, definitely. If I guess like the solution that we choose is the physical environment, then we can explore a lot deeper, I guess, into the technicalities of things and how exactly technology would work. And going on with your example of the rivers, um, Google has actually uh, been working with this company that basically uses machine learning to identify fish and then things that aren't fish within like rivers and lakes. And like this is an example of how machine learning and like training your data set um, can work towards like identifying living things from like non-living things um, and then seeing how we can basically identify among non-living things like like seaweed or like this is plastic and so there's a lot of research um, and investing being poured into this uh, space and there's like a lot of potential just being able to really identify natural ecosystems through machine learning and different training sets um, a lot of times right now it's using um, like pictures and videos, um, essentially, but yeah. Yeah, so it's something that we really want to explore. And also, I guess to go along with um, Imran's, uh, um, the cost recapture question, um, I guess a lot of these, especially with the physical environment solution, a lot of really big investment banks, like they're investing in like green bonds and like forest bonds and ocean bonds where they're really investing in projects that basically um, help aid and whether that's like rebuild the natural environment or make it better. And so there's like a lot of opportunity for like um, commercial, just like viability within the physical environment. Uh, yeah. Got it. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think it's the perfect transition to move to Whole Foods and Method. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Samsung Robotics. Let's uh, have the last group, so Method and Whole Foods sharing their screen and get ready. Okay. I'll be sharing my screen. And quick mic check. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yes. hear you. Okay, can everyone see our slides? Yes. yes uh... Okay, it's loading. Cool. 
So we'll start. Let's go, guys. Have you considered using soap that not only cleans you, but also keeps our planet clean? Hi, I'm Suga, and I'm working with Jenny and Joey on our Deplastifying the Planet project. Our challenge prompted us to consider how waste streams from Whole Foods can be transformed into inputs for Method. And right off the bat, we identified two primary goals. How do we lower the input cost for Method, and how do we increase waste diversion rates for Whole Foods? In our groundwork, we found three major pain points. How do we work with pre-existing Whole Foods infrastructure to solve waste so that we can extract clean, quality, raw material? How do we uh, differentiate methods um, products from other sustainable uh, cleaning supply competitors? And the last being, how do we recruit regrettable plastics from consumers? During our research, we interviewed over 50 different stakeholders. Uh, some key figures we talked to, including Tom, who's the director of Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry, Billy Hart Cooper, who's a research chemical engineer at USDA. We also talked to our partners and some other um, environmental research and industry leaders. And additionally, we also conducted over 40 interviews with potential customers on what they thought about our uh, potential solutions. So we first learned that Whole Foods' largest waste streams were cardboard and food from some interviews we had from Whole Foods manager. And we also learned that Method's largest purchases were packaging and soap. So looking at the overlap between pack uh, packaging and cardboard, we wanted to look at an opportunity to recycle the cardboard. Second, we looked at the different kinds of bioplastic companies that were around the area and what kind of feedstock they were using. And we realized that we could use the Whole Foods uh, like food feedstock for some of them. So by reducing the cost of feedstock by using the Whole Foods pre-existing food waste, we can reduce the cost of materials, making bioplastics an economically attractive solution. So because of our stakeholder interviews, we decided to narrow our focus to create a method product incorporating fiber or bioplastic packaging sourced from Whole Foods feedstock. And Jenny will now Jenny introduce will now After consulting our corporate and research partners, okay, you be mute when you're in effect. Yeah, okay, it's good. Oh, sorry. Okay, you're good. Let's go. Oh, okay, we're confident in the feasibility of our three solutions. Solution A is the most intuitive. We designed a compostable bottle made of fibers from Whole Foods cardboard waste and a thin compostable PHA lining. By utilizing food waste as a feed feedstock for our PHA, we hope to cut costs. You'll notice that both mock-ups have a slightly smaller spout compared to other detergent bottles. The minimal design of the spout optimizes the amount of bioplastic used. By creating a compostable bottle, we hope to address the recycling facilities pain points, which is user error and contamination in recycling streams. The concentrated detergent formula will also cut carbon emissions. Solution B is a detergent pod lined with a bioplastic film. The bioplastic film can be made from polyvinyl alcohol, a non-toxic water-soluble bioplastic. Many water-soluble plastics break down microscopically and work their way into water streams. PVOH, on the other hand, is biodegradable over time and can be created from whole food sourced feedstock. Solution C is the most novel. We wanted to work on a dry soap product to move away from plastic packaging. By removing the aquatic element, we hope to save on water weight during the transportation process, allowing for lower logistic costs. However, we saw that current consumers don't really like to use bar soap as they perceive it to harbor germs. So we thought about flake soap, a product that can be individually portioned out, portable and stored in small containers and dissolvable into liquid solutions when needed. Flake soap can be stored in a bowl and dispensed with a spoon. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good, I got that. Uh, after proposing our solutions, we surveyed consumer stakeholders to evaluate our products. When consumers were asked to rank our solutions, we can see there was a strong preference for our solution B, the biopods. When asked to rank our products on their innovative significance, consumers showed a preference to soap flakes and for the biopods as well. To estimate the market price for our products, we asked consumers whether they would pay uh, for each product and if so, how much. Solution B was the product most consumers were willing to purchase for the highest price. 
Based on the results of our 44 consumer respondents, we would recommend solution B, the biopods, to our partners. It was seen as innovative and also the most preferred and the highest valued. We're still developing our ideas further, so please let us know if you have any suggestions or preferences for any of the products. Let's transform the way we clean. And, yeah, anybody, yeah, yeah. and fantastic five minutes on the dot. The timing was yeah, great. Uh, anyone who want to jump in? Any outsiders who has questions or comments? <clears throat> Talk, talk me through a little, little bit more. Maybe can you go back to the slide with the solution B, the, the pods? Joey, do you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah. Again, so there are some... Oh. Go ahead. Okay, so there are some firms that produce the polyvinyl alcohol film, but our challenge would be to uh, use feedstock sourced from Whole Foods to create that through bacterial fermentation. And it does look theoretically possible, but there are some challenges involved with that. Uh, specifically, a lot of the uh, intermediary steps are flammable, which would make producing it a bit difficult. Did you, uh, what, did you get feedback uh, from, your, uh, from your partner to your recommendations and to solution B, what they, what they feel, what the, even commercial potential of something like this is? Yes, we talked to Kai and he didn't want to steer us too much in any one direction, but he did some, say that it was uh, something that uh, sounded feasible and that they might be interested in. And in addition, um, Billy from USDA said that there was actually a lot of research being done on this area and that um, this was one of the solutions he recommended as well. And for for the for your so you you named uh, your next challenge to be the technical one to actually create this material. What do you what do you need? What what can we from Berkeley try to hook you up with? Uh, well, we would need a facility with which to work. Um, uh, I think a lab environment might be required for this because there's uh, different temperatures we have to heat the concoction to. Okay. And um, we would also need uh, high starch feedstock, so like potatoes, and uh, I think potatoes might be a good bet for that. Um, so let's take this offline. Let's let's connect um, afterwards. You know, after after twelve or after one p.m. today like to, to listen a little bit more to you so that I can go uh, chase, chase the campus in Berkeley to, to try to find you, you know, professors and labs and researchers that might, might be working in, in that, uh, that might have share your interest of developing these materials. Okay. Do you have any questions or, or comments? This is, uh, th this is Joe on the, on the method side, so I'm very close to this one, obviously. Um, and uh, obviously Kai does have connections. He's not here to, to speak to it, but he does have some connections for you guys, as he's probably mentioned. I think the other thing, um, the other thing that is uh, maybe, maybe obvious when you think about the execution of this is that from a consumer standpoint, uh, there's like a very rich story that kind of starts at Whole Foods and continues through to the consumer that needs to be told in a very specific way and, and to bring along the consumer and help them understand how this is different. I think probably most of them today, if you ask them, they're not even quite clear on what those pods are made of. Is it plastic? What type of material is it? Is it degradable? Is it not degradable? So there's, um, there's an education piece and a really rich story that can be brought into this whole thing, which you've started to tell here, but there's, uh, you know, uh, the execution of that is quite, um, it's quite challenging and it is something that, um, but it's worth telling and it's very interesting. Right, yes, there would have to be some uh, An ID maybe, a feedback for us. Sure. Yeah. I, have a, um, I have like two questions. One, um, so I didn't know, I haven't, I don't have all the history of this project, but in terms of the pods, that just, it means that there's one dose, which can be interesting, but I think it's also interesting to like have ideas of how, and that's where the soap flakes are potentially interesting and it's, there's a lot of traction of that in Europe at the moment. A lot of people are starting to put flakes and are just kind of like reusing their bottles to be able to make um, with flakes their initial soap that they're used to using. 
um, because depending on what detergent is or what use, um, some people use more soap to do their dishes or all of a sudden. So I think there's like something to think about there in terms of like really designing something that has a fit that can influence the market kind of on a larger scale. Um, also having kind of worked and visited with companies that are using food waste to create um, different products, there is definitely something that's hard to have a very clean supply chain on the food waste aspect. Sometimes if you have meat in there, it's gonna, everything's gonna be thrown off. Um, it's a very interesting something to look at, but it's definitely super complicated and like there's lots of legislation involved. Um, so just kind of a heads up on that aspect as well. Right, yes, we wanted to propose some uh, out of the box solutions that might be more achieve, achieve, but we also wanted to consider them as well. So and our another, so Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, another consideration is that we might not have to be the ones like, for example, testing the materials, creating this entire supply like chain, we could right. involve a third party vendor um, and just like figure out how to source the waste correctly from Whole Foods such that there's like little con contamination. It could be more of a logistics problem than a chemistry one. Oh, I wanted to make just a little comment. Sorry. Um, no, no, it, it was just that I really like the way um, you set up the questions for the for the interviews. I believe that, I mean, from all the ones I, that I've seen, they, they, they proved to be really well, I guess, um, written. So it gave out really good information, especially I like the way you kind of got a, a conclusion from, uh, I guess, viability from the biopods by looking how like more people would actually pay more for it than the other um, solutions. So uh, I thought that was good and just wanted to say, you know, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. One last uh, question or one last comment on this group? Yes, I have one. Um, so this is Mahavir from Forisia and one question I had that I was really curious with was what, so during your research process, what were your interactions like with your partner? Like how, like if you needed help with something or if you like did that, like what were some times where you actually needed uh, the resourcefulness that your partner provided? I think we needed to first understand what our partner's needs and like standpoints were like, what what does Whole Foods recycle? What kind of waste do they get and how do they process a pre-existing one? So we visited a, like an actual Whole Foods and talked to the store manager there. And then talking to Kai and understanding like what kind of products they're making. And we know that since Kai runs like the green incubator space that they're probably already working on some different solutions. So Kai also like talks about the principles. Like Kai give us this one way to think about uh, decisions where they quantify the sustainability aspects because often if people are talking about a bunch of things but you're comparing apples to oranges you're not able to choose like well which decision do they make so they look at the economic feasibility and assign points to like, how green each thing is to like ultimately choose so we felt that that was like a helpful way to look at things and also I think because all of our group don't have that much material science expertise our partners were able to point us to a lot more people that we can talk to and learn from. Mm, interesting. Thank you. Fantastic, guys. I think uh, we've done it. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, it was a massive challenge, <laughs> uh, but you've done it. Uh, great job on the timing, great job on the slides, great job on the project. And again, it's just the, the, the beginning, I could say, or just the middle of the program. Uh, before switching my teams, uh, I just like to give the mic to Alex and my team because we're very proud of what we're doing and we'd like to spread out the word. Uh, Alex, you want to say a word about uh, what's coming after in terms of, of speaking about the program? Sure, thank you, Matthew. Um, it's great to meet all of you guys. Uh, I would have preferred to be here in person, but this is just as good. Um, so yeah, I'm working with School Lab for communication and marketing. And as Matthew said, we, we really love this program and I would really love to hear what you guys have to say and how you guys are living this, um, this adventure. So I'll be getting in, I just wanted to say hello basically and tell you I'll be getting in touch with you guys um, in the next couple of days or weeks to ask you your um, thoughts and to share feedback about the program with us. Great work, everybody. I won't take any much more of your time. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you.
Thank you, Alex. Um, may I ask Tongi, maybe as you have seen the last uh, cohort, uh, you've been kind of close to the program and you have an, an expert eye from what you're doing at Google right now. Uh, any any kind of crush, any uh, big uh, thing that you like during the presentation as kind of a conclusion of that? Yeah, uh, very impressed by uh, by the progress uh, of this first uh, part of the, the semester. I think the the student really uh, got, got on to their project in very detailed and analyzed the, 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 the client's need. So it feels like uh, they are going on a, on a good track. I was very surprised uh, today to also already uh, have some really quite strong recommendation. Uh, personally, I think I'm not going to pinpoint the, the groups, but I think some of them are... Um, are um, uh, discuss, discussable, uh, and are, um, I think that would I would like to to make sure that the groups don't narrow their research to the one that they uh, chose today. Uh, of course, it has to depend on the you know on the on the client, and if they have a feedback for for that, it's it's good. But uh, yeah, so that's the, that's very uh, great to see. And uh, uh, as of the, the our Google experience, uh, what what I want to focus on is that it's really great to look at and, and think about really techie solutions. But at the end of the day, we have to remember what the question is. And the question is, is how we reduce our footprint and how we make a real impact. So uh, make sure you answer that question as well as just not providing a piece of technology that does something, but we actually not really sure how much effect it's making. That's a uh, maybe a kind of a conclusion for my thoughts on, on your solutions. That's a fantastic conclusion. Thank you so much, Tongi. For the students, so you had uh, those, what I call outsiders that are all experts and uh, we're gonna make sure you can reach out to them because I think they've all brought very interesting uh, insights and input for your project. Uh, now we're gonna move, so to separate room, uh, the end for every team to have a moment with their partner, to kind of uh, deeper in those solutions and hopefully isolate one that you really want to work on for the future, even though, as Tony said, you don't want to just, you know, throw away the others, uh, but just to make sure you have a, a, um, like an agreement on what you want to pursue for the next weeks. Uh, Veronica, can you help us uh, see how we're going to go from this main room to the separate rooms? Yes, um, so I'm about to send out an invite and everyone should get an invite that says um, you're being invited to a different room, just click join and you should be all set to go. Um. Okay, let's go. So I hope you'll find your way <laughs> to the next room. Uh, again, thank you so much uh, for being here and uh, we'll see you next Friday for the students. Hello. Yeah, who's the one calling in? Phone number. Uh, that's Caleb. I'm dialed in for a better connection, but my video is up uh, as well. Okay. Um, I can assign both of them to the same one. There we go. Yeah, so for anyone else, um, I don't know. If... Uh, this is Aubrey. Can you assign me to the method room? Yes, thank you. Yeah, can you assign me to the Denon room, please? Of course. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, Veronica, I guess you want to put Imran with the Samsung robotic team? Yeah. His invite should have been sent. Um, and and Tongi, I don't know if you have any, any time left and if you'd like to, to join a team uh, or not, you don't have to. And thank you so much for all the time spent yet already. No, I, uh, I have time. Uh, uh, Gert just suggested about the Samsung Robotics, but um, I, I, uh, I can join anyone. I had a pretty, pretty, probably a bit more to share with Danone, but it's, I, I'm happy yeah, to. Well, yeah, let's go on Danon because actually the, the Danon client is not here because he's in France. So mm. it's better if we can get more experts on Danon. Sure, I'll join the room then. Uh, very Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Yep. yep, thanks. Did you get it? Beautiful.
Uh, we also have Ernesto. Do we know um, if he's joining anything? Hi, I don't know which rooms are. This is Ernesto. Hi. Um, do you know which team you would be best? Well, which which rooms do you have? Um, so we have Freesia, Danon, Samsung IoT, Robotics, and Method. So each of the five um, projects. Oh, um, the robotics might be interesting. Okay. Um, and what? Um, give me one second. Is, is, is this is this in the same format as the as, as the previous sessions or is this more collaborative? Um, it's basically a chance for the partners to just meet with the teams and talk uh, in more depth about the projects. Oh, I'm okay. Hey, Ernesto, uh, sorry to interfere. I'm not sure how you get connected to us. Um, Helen. Oh, we, okay. we work for the team. We, we, we work. We work together. Okay, amazing. Sorry, I didn't, yeah, I wasn't No, sure. no, I, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next There was no chance to introduce, so I'm sorry. No, no worries. Uh, it's, you know, uh, this, this remote thing is, is, you know, making us learning how to, you know, uh, speak with people you can't see. Uh, actually, so the, the next part is more collaborative, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and so, uh, yeah, if, if, there, if, you, if you see any input you could provide with uh, Samsung Robotics, that would be great. Um, if you don't mind, just maybe uh, once you join the room, introduce yourself briefly so that they know. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure if 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 I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm coming in for for Helen because she couldn't stay for the whole session, so I'm. I'm trying to pick up things that you know may be useful to us. So yeah. I, I don't know if the next sessions are meant to be that way or. Yes, they are. So yeah, we the yes. team. Sorry. Yeah, so I, I completely encourage you join, you know, jo join your team over there. It's really for the students to, to, to get private feedback to their presentation and also some encouragements because for the next, during the next week now, they have to write like a, you know, intermediate report on the project. We gave them an extra week to do that and you can have <laughs> input and guidance and uh, maybe some additional research tasks that they okay. can. That they well, can. okay. Um, I think the robotics may, I, hopefully I can be of value to the students, but uh, I'll try. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, you should be receiving an invite. I did. I was, I'll, I'll just click join the breakout room. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And how we can, how you and I can join, I don't I'm know. I'm going to join Zenon because I was too personal. Ah, okay. So we're yeah. going to assign you. Um, you should be assigned to Dan yeah, and Matthew. I'm, 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 that's fine. But that's great that we've sent two experts there so that they can work without me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, great. Uh, thank you so much, Veronica, uh, for putting this together. I think for now we didn't have any big, uh, any big. You know, no, there was no hiccup. I, I'm not going to touch my computer because. <laughs> I'm afraid if I touch the wrong button, all the five, everything <laughs> collapses. <Yeah. laughs> but I don't yeah. know if I can join. Maybe I just join with you. Yeah. If, as we go I mean, room or something. yeah, if you want to join one, I can definitely. Um, oh, you would assign me? In a team, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I just go with yeah, my team. Can, can okay, see. that works. So, so I don't touch my, my machine, so it's, uh, oh, it was pretty smooth. Yeah. yeah worked out well. <laughs> yeah, and I think it, it was just in, like five teams is just fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. It would have been too much like yeah. last Monday we had the demo day with Stanford. It was 10 teams that was just, that was just. Oh, uh, all online. online? That's yeah. a lot. That was just too much. Uh, That's, and, yeah. And number of people that need to be connected. What is great is that like, we just had one, like Rosetta, her, her connection was debatable, but the rest was mm -hmm. just fine. Yeah. So, uh, because usually, you know, anytime you would do a Skype or a Hangout or whatever, um, and uh, and it always, you know, crash at some yeah. point. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, really, all the students were very disciplined. Everybody yeah. on, well, almost everybody always on mute, which which of course helps. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, okay, great. So we'll have also to figure out how we're gonna work for next session because it's gonna be remote. Yes. 
next next week yeah which is you know we had uh no next week is not not a big problem I, you know it's about business model and i this is a standard lecture for me okay that i can do and it's easy it's more you know it's more it's more frontal lecture mm -hmm. so it's easy to do over uh easy to do over uh over video and then March 27 is spring break, so there's no class. But then April 3rd was was a was your lecture, Mathieu, about prototyping. Yeah, that's that difficult is, remote. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if we should. No, no. If we should, because you had that person come in or coach come in or would work yeah with it could be uh, we have a designer that can help but we can definitely handle that uh, remotely okay um have you guys been given the official like yes or no as to whether or not classes are going to be remote for the rest of the semester yes so what i heard is that uh, our types of classes there's no there's not even a chance that uh, you know somebody would approve an exception Right. That are only made for uh, sports, sports, and performing dance, arts. dance, and performing arts. Yeah. And even my performing arts class is online. Really? Really? Yeah. I have a dance class. It's great. An online dance class. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's where you see. I mean, are you gonna do this from your room? Because yeah, you know, just. Or yeah, calling. <laughs> that's okay. But then uh, exactly. <laughs> Well, KTV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have all the um, the decks from the team, Veronica? All I... the yes, they're all in uh, under team submissions, and then under three six midterms, and then there's a folder for presentations. Okay, so we'll, yeah, yeah. But so we'll you put, know, this uh, morning we had only two of them. But yeah, now we have four of them. Yes, they're all yeah. in there. Uh, there's the one I there's one the one from Yuna that I I can't rename for some reason. Um, most of them you probably won't be able to rename because they're the originals and not copies of them, so they're owned by those teams most likely. And then would you put the the movie posters also under the in the presentations uh, folder? They're in um, they're in the midterm folder, but not in the presentations. Okay if that makes sense. Um, I'm still waiting on Fericias. I think they said they were currently- oh, I saw it somewhere in- That's the only <laughs> thing that's late. Yeah, it's just the movie poster from Fericia. It's in Slack. Um, uh, Rosetta put it in Slack, Fericia. Beautiful, okay. Uh, we On Monday morning, uh, the Danone client can actually be free. So I've asked the team if they could redo the pitch in front of them. They're fine. Uh, just need to set up, you know, the a Zoom room. Yeah. Is it is it easy to do with the the Berkeley account? Uh, um, I think it can be any account, um, and you could probably use this same Zoom room. Okay. And just give them the link. Um, so. Yeah. So this Zoom room. I don't know how to do that because when I log in, it goes via my Berkeley login. Yeah, that's what thing. I'm <laughs> Yeah, but I can give you one from, uh, you know, from from the company. We have Zoom as well. I can okay. just book. A, we can just book a meeting, and you get the key, and you can run it. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. So let's, uh, I see that the Dan can you see, Veronica, can you see all the rooms? Um, I have, I don't have like video of all the rooms, but I have them all here, if that makes sense. No, just to see at least to make sure, because I, I can see the Dan in front of me and they're just in a very intense conversation, which is great. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's the same thing for the others and, and just to make sure, because I know Ugo from Parisia, he was there at some point, but then he left. So right. I'm sure, he's back, or at least to make sure that the team's working. Yeah, he's not back, but I can join their team for a couple minutes and kind of just yeah, be check with them, and then yeah. maybe um, I can actually. Do you want me to message Hugo and ask if he's around to talk with them for a few minutes? 
Right, or maybe uh, yeah, either uh, text Hugo or add the team because I know they been, they were on the phone with Hugo probably yesterday, so maybe they just you know agreed together that they're not meeting today uh, with him. And if you can check the, the other rooms to make sure like uh, they're all. I know Imran from somebody is struggling a bit understanding what we can we can how we can help. Right. That is what is kind of his role, uh, and the same thing about you know the most active one at the same time so I'm just gonna make sure things are going smoothly on that side as well. Uh, okay um, I'm getting a notification here from Team Robotics saying that they want help so I'm gonna join that really quickly and then amazing. come back. And let me know if you need me.
really good job. Oh, I'm not on mute. Hello? It's bringing alternative to water, uh, and, and that's good also. Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, this is Imran. So uh, we're done with our breakout session. OK, did you get some uh, good uh, additional inputs? Samsung Robotics team. Mm -hmm. Matthew, so I yeah, so I had a quick question. Uh, am I the only person or? Okay. <laughs> Imran, it's Gert here. I'm here. Yes. Matthew just went outside because he's in a, in a different room. So I just wanted to better understand the uh, expectations uh, for the final project. Um, mm. So, so what, what would constitute the project? You mean for the end of the semester now? Correct. Right. So now we're, um, for the rest of the semester, we have a couple of things that we want to add to this. We will have, uh, next week, we will have a lecture on bus business models. So now it's, we you heard it two or even three times today. Okay, that's that's a nice, now what's, what's the business, how to make this into the pro uh, to a market, how will, how would people pay for it and so on. So we'll wrap a business model around this product idea that we now have. I and then the, the other thing is we want to, Matthew and I with the, this, this semester's course, we want to, to get as close to actually making stuff. I see. Proto prototype, prototyping, mock-ups, and get, again, of course, get, go out and get feedback to it as possible. And that, that's the two large pieces that are left in this class. I see. What we want to have by the end of the semester. So ideally, by the end of the semester, we have a prototype to show. And we have a business model that we went out and tested and got feedback uh, to. I see, I see. So um, as it relates to Samsung Robotics, Mm -hmm. The technology or the kind of technology that um, the group is talking about is so out in the future that um, it'll be yeah. hard to um, prototype any of that right now. I'm, complete, I'm completely with you and the same applies to Foresia who have a, you know, a, very, a, a very specific task. To, task to, you, you try to go and produce a door, a car door. Right, right. So, so we'll, you know, for, for these teams, of course, the, for each project, we'll just be flexible and, and adjust to what is possible and, and so on. So um, is, is it fair? Okay, let me make sure I understand. So the, the current presentation, as we saw, um, um, you are expecting students to add some more, especially uh, as it relates to business model. Yeah. Uh, more slides as to uh, how to turn this into something. How does it make economic sense? Who pays for what? Who makes the money and, and how it's done? Is that is that right? Uh, that's right, yes. And right. then for the robotics final delivery, you know, as it was already in the original challenge statement, it's, it's very wide, but the final delivery is some sort of a, a movie, a performance, a book, a something manifestation right. to represent what what that future could look like okay uh, okay i think i understand we'll figure out together what that will be i mean you um, i'll be looking to you to you know to make to make su suggestions and proposals what that could be okay okay sounds good so you know uh, as a uh, with respect to a prototype it could be it could be a rough drawing or uh, um you know some 
some 3D computer model that that might take too long or might not be a 3D computer model. It could be a animated movie. It could be, as far as I'm concerned, it could be a, a performance. Right, right, right. You know, so, so because yes, you do. You're right. You. <coughs> But the some uh, Samsung robotics team really has the freedom to be to be visionary. That's right. And in order to be visionary, I think it uh, yeah, it can be very far out there in order to you know to make us think. Right. <coughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, I, I enjoyed the presentations. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much, Imran, for, for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Yeah, you too. Hey, Veronica, I think you can. I uh, know oh, I don't know. Do you think it records the breakout rooms as well? Um, I don't think so i actually have no idea but i'm no i'm guessing it wouldn't um i can probably yeah I'll, i can stop the recording for oh just it. let just let it record let it go okay yeah yeah let it in case it does record the breakout rooms i'm i'm right. not sure I'm curious <laughs> i don't think so if you go into one of those breakout rooms can you see uh, yeah i can see them um the yeah i just icon. talked to Felicia. um and they're meeting with Hugo on Monday, so they decided not to like try to find him today. Um, I think Samsung Robotics is all, they've all dispersed at this point. So they all talked with um, mm -hmm. Erwan and then um, have all left. And then it looks like uh, IOT and Team Dannon are still all chatting, um, but Method and Whole Foods also have disappeared okay yeah that's fine yeah yeah and uh, Mathieu went out he's in one of the team rooms yeah, he's in well we just let yeah. it run i think i yep i made the reservation for at least another until one o'clock or something oh beautiful there you go mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so i'm just gonna let him run and mm -hmm. they can leave whenever they want to leave right okay cool yeah. I, i'll just actually i will um let me see if I can. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll tell them. I'll type a message and tell them all like. Uh, that basically once they're done talking, they're just welcome to leave. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Yeah, because only you can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um.
Ah, okay, attends. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Good luck. Thank you. She's doing Okay. She used to work in a big organization in Europe. She's from Belgium. And then she traveled for a month. Um, also, I don't know if you guys got the email yet, um, but all of the students just got an email from the chancellor saying that um, they've decided to continue to offer instruction remotely through the end of the semester. Wow. Okay. Um, does that mean that it, it has, I mean, that in any cases it's going to be remote or does it just mean like course class doesn't I mean won't be consoled. Um I'm gonna expect that they're gonna ask most people to not hold any in person uh classes. Um yeah it says for the small number of courses that do not have a remote option students will need to get guidance from their instructors, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, <laughs> and then they talk about social distancing. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to expect that they're going to be online. And the biggest uh, combat to not being online is that because of that, I expect a lot of people will go home or oh. be traveling or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be hard to hold in-person classes anyways. Okay. Got it. We can we could probably do something where we have like um, like office hours or something like that for anyone that wants to come to school lab and work together like as a voluntary outside of class thing. Yeah. Um, that's probably possible. Mm. But other than that, I'm not. I'm not even sure because yeah. uh, I read kind of the emails that that I got and it's. Uh, it's not like optional. It's like no, you cannot, you cannot let students meet in person. Yeah, it was more mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So I, I'm not sure we have the option of well, if you want to come in, you can come in. It's more like we were told tell the students not to come in. Right. Yeah. Well, well. 
<laughs> well, we now know how it works, you know, and yeah. and this this Logitech setup, I can, you know, this is this is portable. I you can steal it. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is, yeah, we can steal it. Yeah, honestly, of, uh, often Friday morning there's not much going on. Mm. It's usually the clients they're here until Thursday, you know, they do Monday to Thursday the project work yeah. and Friday they go home. Yeah. And so you're streaming your, yeah, you're streaming your stream on, on, the, on the... Yes, so that's just uh, uh, this for the TV. And then this is the <coughs> Logitech. And I don't think I had to download a thing. It just, see, it just shows up here, the microphone. Uh, oh, you yeah, have I to choose it. the camera. Yeah. Give me and one second, guys. I'll be right back. Sure. And the video, you also have to choose the, not your laptop, but the external. That is great. Because you know, sometimes the, the TV itself has an access to Zoom and then, <coughs> yes. but I think it's actually much better like this because you can also share your screen and, and it's gonna have better control. I think so. And the problem is I, what I tried in the other meeting room, you know, that we looked at, I went back there and it was exactly like this, that the room has a Zoom, but the Zoom is tied to the account yeah. of the this here, and I need to go through the Berkeley account, mm. and, I, and I couldn't make that work. Uh, you have to invite the Berkeley account as... Yes, and I have to force the Berkeley account mm. onto that machine, yeah, yeah, yeah. which in the other room, actually, the, the, they, they, they yeah, you know, got the... The, 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 te the techie guy mm. and he came and he showed me that he said no this is not going to work because that screen behind it in the wall they have a, an apple box or apple yeah, something TV, yeah. mm. so that's when then I, I started looking around I said oh we have this thing and I found this and I thought this is actually just as good and at least the, the camera is much better that's great. And uh, the laptop camera where, you know, you always look mm. like a fish in a, yeah. in an aquarium. <laughs> the way I realized recently that um, the best option would, is actually to have both because you have the face so you can also, you know, you have like a face, um, like emotional message mm -hmm. that goes through the face. And then as you have the room, you also have kind of the, the general setting, the non-verbal language, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I would like to like exactly what I saw you do before. So in a, other, in a different office, we have a, a little machine like this, but it's a little bit, looks like a big vase like mm. this. We put it in the middle of the desk and at the top. Is it, it's a 360 or no? Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's called the owl. It looks like an owl anyway, okay, the okay. design. But it, it, uh, it shows then the picture of the person who talks. But it's, it's turning? Uh, it must have several cameras inside. I don't know how it, it does, or it just, mm. or it just parses the, 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 the image. Yeah. I don't know how it does it. So there's no moving, can't hear anything. But you just put this thing in the middle of the yeah, table, right. plug it in uh, USB. I think that that is the, I was going to look into that's that the future. <laughs> to get one for mm. here, because this is, I think you can pan and, you know, you can move. You have to click manual. Mm -hmm. And the other one, it's just whoever talks, it's called the owl. Those guys uh, I want one here. <laughs> are, they, are they canceling anything regarding your data screen? Or hmm? Are they canceling any?
Well, okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> how, was, how was your, uh, Wait, okay, already uh, gone. Yeah, I was there anyway. Hey guys, I'm back. Hey Veronica. Hey, Just so you know. Are you, uh, have you recorded everything or are you done recording or? Oh yeah, I'll, I can stop it. So uh, how are the uh, Veronica?